Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Progressive Community Church. We're here live, emanating from, hallelujah, right here in the city of Gary, Indiana. We're Progressive Community Church at 656 Carolina Street, right here in the heart of downtown Gary. And we come this morning, this first Sunday in the new year, amen, just to give God glory, just to give God honor, just to give God praise. We come this morning to worship our Lord and our God in spirit and in truth. We come this morning to lift up holy hands unto God, our Savior. He's our Redeemer. He's our provider. In fact, if you made it over, hallelujah, into the new year, if you crossed over from 2021 into 2022, you ought to be able to give God some praise if he kept you. Hallelujah. No matter how crazy it was in 2021, he still kept you and allowed you to be here and to celebrate in 2022. Hallelujah. It's only the second day of the year, but on the second day of the year, I'm going to give God some praise like it was the 365th day of the year. And so on today, we come to magnify and we come to glorify and we come to lift up the name of Jesus. We come, hallelujah, just to say thank you, Lord. We come, so wherever you are, hallelujah, whether here in the visible church or whether watching us by virtual church, we pray that you would get your heart ready, hallelujah, to worship the Lord God with us. Get your heart, hallelujah, prepared, hallelujah, and your head ready to worship God with us. Get your heart and your head and your hands ready, hallelujah, to clap unto God, to lift up your hands unto God, hallelujah, as you say, get your heart and your head, your hands, and your mouth ready, your mind and your mouth, get it ready, hallelujah, to worship our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, he's been so good, hallelujah, he's been so kind, he's been so wonderful, hallelujah to us, and for this we are grateful, and for this we praise him, hallelujah. So get, get, get a notepad, get your Bible out, get, get ready, hallelujah. Get, get, get your heart, get yourself ready to worship God. We're, we're entering in, hallelujah. We've already spoken that God would go before us and prepare the way for us today as we worship him. We've already spoken and I believe, hallelujah, God has already done it. He's just waiting on us. God is just waiting. He's really just waiting on us, hallelujah, to tap in, hallelujah, to his spirit. And if you tap into his spirit today, hallelujah, on the second day of 2022, you're going to, hallelujah, experience a release. You're going to experience a move of God in your life. Like we didn't experience a move of God before, but it's on you. Hallelujah. He, he's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. Hallelujah. To come to him just as you are. Hallelujah. Without shape, show, or fashion, come to him just as you are today. To lift up the name of the Lord and hallelujah. To worship him in spirit and to worship him in truth. And, and, and the Holy Spirit does what the Holy Spirit does when we all get together. Hallelujah. Worshiping him. Hallelujah. Whether in the virtual church or the visible church, when we all come together with one heart and one spirit and one soul and one mind, when we love the Lord with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our strength and all of our might. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit melts it all together. Hallelujah. In other words, he makes us one. Yeah. He makes us one, one in fellowship. He makes us one, one in worship. He makes us one. And I'm thankful to God today that he makes us one. Hallelujah. And that he brings us all together no matter where we are in the world, no matter where you are listening from. He brings us all together. Hallelujah. From this room to your room. Hallelujah. To the throne room. And I'm grateful to God today. Father, we thank you. 
Hallelujah. We welcome you into this place today, O oh God. We, we welcome you, O oh God, into the sanctuary, O oh God. And we say, O oh God, have your way, hallelujah, in the sanctuary, God. We, we welcome you into the sanctuary of our souls, God, and of our spirits, God. We, we welcome you into our bodies, God, hallelujah, into every part of who we are, God. We welcome you in. And we simply say today, God, as we lift up our hands in submission of the we simply say today, God, and you will make us our worship, 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 you will make us our
God, amen. Let our worship be real, God. Let our praise be real, God. You give us another opportunity to know the God. So let our praise be real, God. Let our worship be real, God. No more holy worship, God. No more fake praise, God. No more holy hallelujah, God. No more unauthentic worship, God. So we want to worship. We want to worship you, O God, in spirit. And we want to worship you in the truth, O God. Hallelujah. We want to worship you in the spirit. Hallelujah. Because you said, Jesus, that those who worship you, O God, must worship you, O God, in spirit.
do great and marvelous and mighty things. Friends, we are grateful to God. For this, we lift up holy hands in His presence. And we lift up holy hands in His Hallelujah. We serve a great God. Amen. And our great God is deserving. Hallelujah. By of our best praise. Amen. Amen. Our great God is deserving of our best praise. You ought to give him, hallelujah, the best of what you have, hallelujah, to offer unto him. We, we, we give, hallelujah, everybody else our best, and, and we need the rest of God. But in 2022, I want you to reverse the order. Hallelujah. I want you to reverse the order. I want you to give your best to God. Hallelujah. And the rest to everybody else. I need you to reverse the order of your giving in this season. Hallelujah. Because God so loved you that he gave you his best. Hallelujah. His best was his son, his only begotten son, Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's, hallelujah, work in 2022 to give our very best to God. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the gospel according to Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew is the ninth. Hallelujah. We'll be in the ninth chapter. It's the first book in what's called the New Testament or the New Covenant. It's the first book in the New Testament. All those that are able, we honor in this house as we, hallelujah, read the word, read scripture. All those that are able, we're going to ask that you would please stand with us as we honor God through the reading of his word. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 8. Amen. Amen. First, hallelujah, book in the New Covenant, the New Testament, ninth chapter of Matthew. I pray that those who are watching us with our virtual church and those that are in the visible church, that you would get a pen and a pad and also write. Amen. I believe God is going to share some things with us on today. And it reads, and he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy. Here he was, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer thy sins be forgiven thee. Verse 3 says, And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their hearts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say that thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, then said he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. Verse 7 says, And he arose and departed to his house. Verse 8 says, But when the multitude saw it, here is what they did. They marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. I want to go back and read verse number 2 and verse number, uh, verse number 2. Hallelujah. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Amen. I want to, uh, you may be seated this morning as we meditate today on a thought of, hallelujah, root cause analysis for paralysis root cause analysis for your paralysis root cause analysis for your hallelujah paralysis in other words how to overcome being stuck how to overcome being stuck that's a, a subtopic how to overcome being stuck the book of Matthew is the first of the Synoptic Gospels, and it was written to reveal the Lord Jesus as the Messiah, the King of the Jews, 
from the line of David. It also was written to convince the Jews that Jesus was indeed the long-awaited Messiah. In fact, in chapters 1 through 4, we learn about the miracle of the birth of Jesus and the events, hallelujah, that surrounded his early life. In fact, all of last month, we delved and dived into, from Luke's gospel, the birth, hallelujah, of Jesus in Matthew chapters 2 through 5 through 25, we learn about the ministry of Jesus. First, we learn in verse chapters 1 through 4 about the miracle of the birth of Jesus. And then in chapters 5 through 25, we learn about the ministry of the man called Jesus. These chapters are, are vital to our knowledge of Jesus and are much of what we know about God living as a perfect man on earth. These passages include, hallelujah, in verses or in chapters 5 through 7, they include Jesus' sermon on the mount, how Jesus told us when we're in relationship with him, how we are to live life, hallelujah, in new life uh, based on our new relationship with Jesus. That's in chapters 5 through 7, hallelujah. And, and then the numerous miracles starting in chapter 8 and priceless teachings to all who would listen and to all that would follow. Chapters 1 through 4 deal with the miracles of Jesus' birth. Chapter 5 through 25 deals with the ministry of Jesus. And then the last three chapters, 26, 27, and 28, that we learn about the mission of Jesus. You ought to know that Jesus came on a mission. Hallelujah. He, he came to earth on purpose. Hallelujah. He came and here was his mission. He did his find his, his mission was to die on an old rugged cross. Hallelujah. His mission was to be buried. Hallelujah. In a borrowed tomb. His mission was on the third day that he would be raised again. Hallelujah. So, so that you and I, hallelujah, would be free to live a life, hallelujah, that's not in, 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 inhibited by our sin. In other words, he came and he lived and he died and he rose again that he might take away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. That, that's verses 20, chapters 26 through 28. They talk about the mission of Jesus. Hallelujah. And his mission was that we, you and I, might have eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. Last month we explored, hallelujah, the ministry and the, the miracle of his birth. Today we will explore his ministry. Hallelujah, Jesus on earth had a powerful minister Dawson ministry. Hallelujah, in chapters, hallelujah, 5 through 7, we looked at the Sermon on the Mount. In chapter 8, Jesus begins his ministry by healing all of those who came to him by faith. Don't miss that. Hallelujah. He healed all of those who came to him by faith. It began in chapter number eight. In chapter number eight, Jesus begins, hallelujah, by healing a leper who came to him by faith. Hallelujah. He, in chapter 8, he performs a long-distance miracle. Hallelujah. And I, I love when Jesus performed long-distance miracles. Hallelujah. There was a centurion who came to Jesus because his servant, uh, hallelujah, was sick of the palsy. He was paralyzed. He had a servant who was paralyzed. And the centurion, hallelujah, came to Jesus on behalf of his sick servant. And Jesus, hallelujah, the man said, Jesus, uh, uh, my house is messed up. Hallelujah, he was honest with Jesus. And he had some stuff going on in his house. Hallelujah. And, and, and Jesus said, don't worry about what's going on in your house. I ain't seen no no, no faith like this uh, in all of Israel. And, and he gave him a long distance miracle. And he healed his servant. Hallelujah, who was sick with the palsy. He heals Peter's mother-in-law, who was sick with the fever. Hallelujah. Many that were brought to him, the Bible says in chapter 8, that Jesus healed them. And then he enters the ship 
And we hear from, hallelujah, while he's in the ship, those timeless words, hallelujah, when Jesus speaks, hallelujah, to the, to, to the storms, hallelujah, and, and to the winds, and to the waves that were bothering the disciples, and we hear Jesus' timeless words, he says, peace. Oh, yeah, I got some Bible readers in here. Hallelujah. Some people, hallelujah, who understand what it means when Jesus speaks a word of peace in the midst of your storm, peace in the midst of your trouble, peace in the midst of your trial, peace in the midst of your tribulation, peace in the midst of what you're going through. Is there anybody in this place that Jesus has spoken peace into your life? Hallelujah. We hear his words. Peace be still in chapter number eight. Hallelujah. And then Jesus gets out of the boat. Hallelujah. Because he's making his way somewhere. And when he gets there, he's met by two men that are possessed with demons. Glory to your name, God. Two men, hallelujah, who have something on them that they can't shake. Hallelujah. Have you ever had something on you that you couldn't shake? Hallelujah. Something that was grabbing you that would not let you go. Hallelujah. Have you ever had something that was grabbing hold of you and would not let go of you? That's what Jesus got. He got to two men that were possessed. Hallelujah. By demonic forces. But here is what I love about Jesus. That when demons come up against Jesus, demons got to go. He cast them out into the pigs. The pigs went jumped off the cliff, hallelujah, and the men were standing there, oh, oh, we need that power of Jesus today, hallelujah, we need some folk to be made whole today, we need that power in the church, the power of the Holy Spirit to cast out demonic forces, to cast out spiritual wickedness in our places, hallelujah, that our brothers and sisters might be made whole. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, I want to be made whole. I want to be made whole. I want to be made whole. But here, here is what happened at the end of chapter 8. I, I'm sad to report, hallelujah, that everybody don't want to see you healed. Hallelujah, you got to understand that in life. Hallelujah, that you got some folk in your life. Hallelujah, they can be in your family. You got some folk in your life. They can be your cousins and them. You got some folk in your family. Junebug and Shanae and them. You got some folk in your family that do not want to see you get well. Do not want to see you made whole by Jesus. Hallelujah, it's a sad state of affairs. Hallelujah, when you live in a place with people all around you who know about, hallelujah, the, the, what you've been possessed with, hallelujah, but get rid of the one who sets you free. They said, Jesus, go home. Come on now. My God, hallelujah, that's what the townspeople said. They said, Jesus, go home. And Jesus don't stay nowhere where he ain't welcome. Hallelujah, Jesus got back in the boat. And he went back on the other side. And that's where we enter the text today. In chapter 9, he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own, hallelujah, country. He got back home, his own city. He made it back home. The text starts by Jesus leaving a place because uh, there were people in that place uh, that did not want his presence there. Hallelujah. And, and the text then says, unto us and hallelujah in verse 2 and behold they brought hallelujah to Jesus a man sick of the palsy lying on a bed now if you want to know more and I encourage and invite you hallelujah in your meditative time hallelujah to get a more descriptive details about what we're going to preach about today by going to Mark chapter 2 verses 1 through 12 and Luke chapter 5 verses 15, uh, 17 through 26 in there you'll understand hallelujah more about this miracle hallelujah Matthew gives us the cliff note version Matthew was just trying to hit and quit it. Hallelujah. But Mark and Luke, hallelujah, they gave a little bit more description about what we're going to share today. But thinking as far as I was studying this text, Antoine, as I was studying this text, I got arrested. 
Yeah, I got arrested. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that, hallelujah, and the whole they brought to Jesus a man. Hallelujah. And, and then they began to describe the man Matthew does. Hallelujah. Matthew was a disciple of Jesus whose name was Levi. Matthew says in his gospel that he was a man. And here is what he said. Sick of the palsy. Hallelujah. Palsy simply means he's paralyzed. He can't go nowhere. Hallelujah. It simply means, hallelujah, that, that, that he can't move, that he's stuck. Hallelujah. And he was, hallelujah. I never heard it this way. Hallelujah, Sister Lisa. But, but in my mind, when it said sin of the palsy, hallelujah, it got me to understand that this man was sick of his condition. Hallelujah. Have you ever been sick? Hallelujah. Of your condition. Hallelujah. If you've ever been sick, hallelujah, of your condition, sick of being stuck, sick of being left in place, sick. If you've ever been sick of being paralyzed, then you know what this man is going through. He was a man sick of the palsy, sick of being paralyzed. And here is his position. He's lying on the bed. He can't go no way, y'all. Hallelujah. And, and then the text says, hallelujah, that, that Jesus, hallelujah, if you go and read Luke and, and, and Mark's version, you'll discover that he was brought there by four friends. In other words, he didn't get there by himself. Hallelujah. He had four friends uh, who carried him to Jesus. When I was growing up, I used to listen to a song by Houdini. It said, friends, how many of us have them? Friends, ones we can depend on. Friends, how many of us have them? Hallelujah. Before we go any further, let's be friends. Hallelujah. He had some friends uh, that he could depend on. Some friends uh, that he could, hallelujah, hallelujah, depend on. Some friends uh, that were ride or tied. He had some friends uh, that stuck with him no matter how low life got for him. Hallelujah. And right about now he's really low in life. But his four friends, they do some really good things. They bring him to Jesus. And you ought to have some friends, uh, hallelujah, that will bring you to Jesus. If you ain't got no friends that will bring you to Jesus, you got to get some new friends. You got to have some friends who have a relationship with Jesus. His four friends bring him to Jesus, but not only do they bring him to Jesus and the other Matthew, I mean Mark and Luke, you'll discover that when they got there, when they got to the house where Jesus was teaching at, uh, there was no room for them uh, to get in the door. Hallelujah. The, uh, the service was packed and they could not get in. But here's what a friend will do. A friend will go above and beyond uh, to get you where you need to be. They went up on the roof uh, and they took the roof off. Hallelujah. That they might get their friend where Jesus is. Uh, they tore off the roof. They peeled it back. Hallelujah. And then they lowered their friend down right where Jesus is. Hallelujah. And the text says the first thing, hallelujah, that, that Jesus notices, uh, hallelujah, is not the man. It's in the text. He doesn't notice the man. Uh, not the fact that they tore off the roof. Not the rope that they lowered him down on. Hallelujah. He, he could have seen all of that. But the first thing that the Bible says that Jesus saw was their faith. It's right there in the text in verse 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says they brought him a man. And this man was sick of the palsy. He was lying on the bed. And Jesus seen their faith. Yeah, that's what he says. Hallelujah. He, Jesus, shares with us that this unnamed man had some faithful and faith-filled friends. The text says that Jesus looked and saw their faith. I love this text because it helps us to understand that Jesus sees faith. The first thing that Jesus saw was their spirituality. Hallelujah. He saw that they were spiritual minded. Jesus saw their faith, which suggests to us on today that what moves the hand of God 
God. What moves the heart of Jesus is to see your faith. Hallelujah. If you want to see something change in your life, why don't you show up, hallelujah, with faith to Jesus. If you want to see Jesus act on your behalf, why don't you show up with faith to Jesus. If you want to see change happen in your life, if you want to see transformation happen in your life, the text teaches us that you got to show up to Jesus with faith. Hallelujah. What, what, what caused Jesus to even consider, hallelujah, what lay in front of him was their faith. It, it wasn't a service that they carried the man, but it was their faith. Because we get mixed up, hallelujah. We, we say, if I just come and usher, hallelujah, Jesus is going to see. If I, if I come and sing, Jesus said, if I come and pray, Jesus said, if I come, hallelujah, and preach, Jesus, we get mixed up thinking that all of that stuff, hallelujah, will get Jesus to see us. But it doesn't take all of that. Jesus said, yes, you ought to do that, but, but, but don't leave out your faith. Hallelujah. He didn't see the ingenuity tearing off the roof. He didn't see that they carried him. He didn't see their good intention. When Jesus looks at us, he's not interested in seeing our flash. He don't care what you got on. He don't care what you live in. He don't care what's in your bank account. He don't care what a position you hold. He don't care how great you've been. He don't good care how good you look, hallelujah, to yourself or anybody else. He don't care about that. When you come to Jesus, you got to come by faith. Yeah. And the question that must be posed then in the room is what does Jesus, hallelujah, see when you are in front of him? That's a question you got to, hallelujah, deal with in the mirror on your own. Hallelujah. What does Jesus see when you come and stand in front of him? Does, does, does he see, are you trying to get him to see you? Or are you trying to get him to see your faith. Yeah. And I'm afraid today, Minister Dawson, for some of us, that when Jesus peers into our person, that he will not see faith. And that, that disheartens me. And that's why we preach in this message today. Because if you're going to do anything of substance and of value in 2022, it's all going to happen because of your Faith. And if that is the case, then the question that we must ask ourselves, the question that we must pose today is how do I get faith so that when Jesus peers into my person, that Jesus sees faith? Yeah. Yeah. Where, where does this faith, in other words, come from? I'm glad you asked. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 17, faith coming by Oh, somebody knows the scripture. Hallelujah. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Somewhere along the way, these faith-filled, faithful friends heard the word of God. But not only did they hear the word of God, but you can hear it in one ear and let it go out of the other ear. But they heard the word and they received the word of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, they, they heard it, but, but they didn't just hear it and then walk away from it, but they put the word to work in their life. And when you put the word to work in your life, you'll discover that faith will begin to grow in your, in your life. Hallelujah. They received the word. Hallelujah. And received faith. And it was their faith that, that caused them to carry this man to Jesus because they had faith enough to believe that Jesus could heal him. Yeah, the text says that Jesus 
saw their faith. Where, where did he see it? What acronym for faith could be this? Where did they see it? Faith. F stands for faith. A, -A, -A, -A stands for all. I stands for in. G spells for there. H spells for heart. He saw faith all in their heart. Hallelujah. That, that's what he was looking for. He was looking in their heart and he discovered faith where all in their heart. Hallelujah. They, they had faith uh, all in their hearts. Some, hallelujah, have faith in your head. In other words, faith is just a concept to you. Hallelujah. In other words, what, what church is just a concept to you. You got faith all in your head. Faith all in that head. It's just a concept. It really don't mean anything to you. In other words, you ain't experienced anything in your life that made you move from head faith to heart faith. That move faith out of your head as a concept so you have some experience with walking with God. And now I'm walking with God by faith. They have faith all in their heart. Head faith will lead you when the road gets tough and when the going gets rough and when the hills are hard to climb. But I want to know, is there anybody in this place that's graduated from head faith to heart faith? Yeah, he looked and Jesus saw faith all in their heart. That's faith. Faith all in their heart. And today somebody ought to thank God for friends that have faith for us. Here it is. When we don't have faith for ourselves. You ought to thank God for friends. Hallelujah. That have faith enough for you to bring you to Jesus. You ought to thank God for family members that have faith enough for you that said, baby, I can't help you no more. But I know a man that can give you all the help that's you mean you gotta have some people and you ought to thank God for some people that have faith all in their heart that they'll be able to bring God hallelujah and bring you to God thank God for people that carry us to Jesus by faith they have faith all in their heart but another acronym for faith I've discovered hallelujah here it is F Father A all I into H hands. Oh, that's another acronym for faith. Faith F Father A all I N Hallelujah T V H hands. Father all in to thy hands. Hallelujah. That's another acronym for faith. And, and that's what faith is. It's taking everything out of your hand and placing it all in God's hand. And is there anybody in this place that can say, Father all in thy hands. What are you doing? I'm taking my plight and I'm placing it in his hands. I'm taking my problems and I'm placing it in his hands. I'm stuck in a jam. I'm in a pickle and I'm placing it in his hands. My life is in peril and I'm placing it in his hands. I'm carrying stuff but I'm tired of carrying what I'm carrying and I'm placing it all in his hands. I'm taking it out of my hand and I'm placing it in his hands by faith. I'm placing it farther all in by hands. What are you taking in his hand? This and that. Hallelujah. Some said this, this and that. What else did he say? This, this, this and that. Whatever the problems, all of my problems, all of my burdens, all of my trials, all of my troubles, all of my situation, I'm stuck and I can't move. I've fallen and I can't Yeah, I'm placing it. I'm placing it in in the hands of God. Uh, uh, I'm taking it out of my hands. And I don't know what you're dealing with today. Hallelujah. But you gotta have faith. Father, hallelujah. All in thy hand. You gotta have faith today to remove it from your hands. Hallelujah. Here it is. Hallelujah. Tennis racket in my hand. 
Hallelujah. I can't do very much with it. But, but if you place it in Serena and Venus' hand, hallelujah, you'll have championships uh, of basketball in my hand. Uh, I might score one or two buckets, uh, but if I put the same ball hallelujah, in Stephen Curry's hand, uh, he'll break records. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Baseball in my hand, uh, it won't go very far. Uh, but if I take the same ball and put it in the Troy Hogan's hands, uh, I'll end up in... Hallelujah. The MLB Hall of Fame. Hallelujah. All I'm trying to get you to see uh, is you got to take it out of your hand uh, and put it in God's hand. A nail uh, in my hand. Uh, hallelujah. Won't get you very far. But if you put a nail uh, in Jesus' hand, uh, he'll die for you and give you salvation. Uh, because you put a nail in the hand of a carpenter, he'll go to work uh, in your life and I want to know today is there anybody in this place that's ready to take it out of your hand and put all of what you have in the hand in the hand of God tell somebody take it out of your hand yeah, you got to take it out of your hand, hallelujah. And because they have faith, hallelujah, they began to walk to where Jesus was. Because they said, Father, all into thy hands. They went as Second Corinthians 5 and 7. They went walking by faith and not by sight. And Jesus is saying to us in this season that if we want to see miracles happen in life, you must begin to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. They left, they left, they left walking by faith, believing that this brother would be healed. If you want to see healing happen in your life, you got to begin to walk by faith. Father, all in thy hand. Uh, you got to have faith in your heart with faith. All in their heart. They left by faith. Father, all in thy hands. And all I'm trying to get you to see today is you got you to gotta take it out of your hand. I, mean, I, don't care, I don't know what you're dealing with today. Hallelujah, somebody's dealing with some things that here it is, they were dealing with some heavy stuff. Have you ever tried to carry somebody? Hallelujah. And, and they carried them for a long distance. Hallelujah. They didn't get tired of carrying him. But every now and then, uh, carrying some some stuff, hallelujah, will make you frustrated. I wish I had some real people in here today. I don't care how big of a friend they are to you. If you carry them long enough, you will get frustrated. Carry them long enough, you will get tired. I don't care how good of a, a brother or sister you are. But if you carry somebody long enough, it began to weigh on you. And that's why they have to get the weight off. And somebody today, you got to get the weight off. You got to get the weight out of your hands. You got to turn it over to Jesus. That's what they did. Hallelujah. They said, we're going to take it out of our hands. Because here is what they were saying. Glory to your name, God. That we tried. Yeah, God. Everything we could try. We Every place we could be, we just gave God everything that we could do. We took them all with you and took them all with me. We brought them into our house. Hallelujah. But it seemed like it never got better. Is that anybody's story? You have a child, hallelujah, that you've done all you can, and you can all you could, hallelujah, but it seems that it's never, it's getting any better, that's where they were with their friend, they had gotten tired of carrying a load, and somebody today, you 
I'm walking 
menina, foi lindona, tá feita, a plena malvada, viu muito feita, a plena malvada, foi feita ou perfeita, a plena da plena, 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 a plena da plena.
come this morning uh, as a candidate for baptism. Uh, you can come with your Christian experience. That means you've accepted the Lord, but you haven't, hallelujah, been living your life in that way. You don't have a church where you worship at regularly. You can come by letter. You're a member of another church, but God has spoken to your heart, and, and you've been searching for a home, a church home, and God has shared with you this morning that progressive community church is the place that you should call home, and Curtis Whitaker is the person you should call your pastor. If that's you today, won't you come? Won't you come? Hallelujah. Won't you come and give your, your life to God? If, if you may be feeling a tug on your heart, tug on your heart strings, all that is is the Holy Spirit sharing with you that now is the time. Today, the Bible says, if you hear my voice, heart is not your heart. Today, and that means tomorrow ain't promised. Uh, so he said, you got to get it done today. If you're unsure where you're going to spend eternity, because that's what this is all about. You, you, you're unsure, hallelujah, that if you, hallelujah, passed away today, that you spend eternity in heaven with, with, with Jesus, with God our Father. If you're unsure, won't you come down to the altar? We want to just simply pray with you. Hallelujah, we want to pray. We want to pray with you. Hallelujah, we want to pray. We want to pray with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is there one today, whether in the, in the visible church or in the virtual church? If you're in the virtual church, just, just type in, hallelujah, that I'm, I'm ready to receive Jesus into my life. If you type that in, hallelujah, one of the deacons and, or one of the ministers will contact you, hallelujah, on, 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 on the platform, hallelujah, that you're on. Just type that into the screen and, and we'll get it and we'll help walk you through God's plan of salvation. Hallelujah. Don't, don't leave out today the same way that you came into this place. Hallelujah. You, you got to leave out set free by the power of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Don't leave out of this place the same way you came. You came in with burdens. Somebody came in broken. Somebody else came in bruised. And today the message is don't leave out of this place the same way you came in. Hallelujah. You might have come in broken and bruised and burdened, but you can leave out blessed. You might have came in with trouble, but you can leave out in triumph. You might have come in, hallelujah, as a victim. You can leave out in victory. Don't leave out of this place same way you came in, you might have came in, hallelujah, falling and failing, hallelujah, and, and believing you were a failure, but today you can leave out of this place full of faith, hallelujah, because God can transform, literally transform your life, I believe that with all of my heart, that God can literally transform, He can literally transform your life. Won't you come this morning? Hallelujah. Won't you come and give the Lord your heart? Give the preacher your hand and say, Lord, I'm available. I want to be used by you. All over the sanctuary, eyes closed, heads bowed. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor on this day. We thank you for your word on today, oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for, for people in our life who bring us to you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that, that when others reject you, God, that there are some people who still want to see you, Father. Hallelujah. That it, if not for those folks who told you to go back home, O oh God, maybe this man would not have been in this place, God. Hallelujah. To see his life transformed, O oh God. And so we thank you, O oh God, for those who reject you, because God, we in this place, we receive you, Lord. We receive your glory. We receive your presence. We receive your power. We receive your strength. Now, God, we pray that you would fill your children, hallelujah, with faith, God, because your word says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We pray that your word, God, that is going forth today, God, will, will be sown on good ground, Father, and that faith would, would grow in that heart. 
Hallelujah. And that, that, that your people have faith all in their hearts. And to begin to, as, as your word says, to walk by faith. And to no longer walk by sight. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise today, O oh God. And we thank you in advance, O oh God, for all of those, Father, who receive you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. God has sown his seed into our hearts. And he simply asked that we would sow seeds, hallelujah, back into the ministry. And I invite you, hallelujah, to get a seed in your hand. This is the first Sunday of the year. Get a good seed in your hand, hallelujah. I just believe God is going to bless in this season. So get your seed and get it in your hand. We sow both spiritual seeds, so everybody should have a seed. We sow spiritual seeds. You can sow the seed, call it faith, call it love, call it hope. Whatever it is you need in your life, whatever you need, you need God to do in your life, whatever you're asking him to be in your life, I dare you to name your spiritual seed. Mine is the seed of faith and the seed of love. And when you get your seed, just lift up your hand and repeat after me. This is my seed. I did not deserve it, but God so graciously provided it unto me. Therefore, I will sow my seed, I will sow my seed, I will sow my seed in obedience to God's word and in expectation of the harvest. 100% obedience to God, 100% obedience to timing, 100% faith. Amen, amen. They're coming now to give you an opportunity to sow your seed this morning. Yeah, all those watching in the, in the virtual church or even in the visual church, you can sow your seed via the cash app. It's the dollar sign, a PCC Gary. The cash app is dollar sign, PCC Gary. I hope I pray that somebody would place that in. Hallelujah. Into the chat room. The dollar sign, PCC Gary. You can go to Gilnabot. Or you can go uh, uh, to Tidely, and when you get to one of those sites or the app, you can simply type in Progressive Community Church of Gary, and it's at that place where you can sow your seed. Amen? Amen. The Lord loves, the Bible says, a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Somebody that gives from their heart. Because you know, hallelujah, that God gives to you. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody should have something to give today. Hallelujah. Everybody should have something that they can sow, a seed that they can sow into ministry today. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All of those watching by way of the virtual church, get your uh, some cracker and juice ready. We're getting ready to have the Lord's Supper. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We thank you for these seeds that have been sown, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you for, we know that you are the provider of every seed that's good and perfect. Everything that we have, God, it comes. It comes from your hand. And so, God, we give back to you that portion which you uh, asked us to do, oh God, in obedience to your word. And God, we thank you for the obedience of your children. And because of their obedience, Father, we pray that you would sow back into their bosom some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. But God, you're an unlimited God, and we won't place any limits on you. We simply say, however you want to bless your people, your children, to have your way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 
Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this house. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. Amen. Amen. Our God is awesome and he's worthy to be praised. Get, get your communion out. Hallelujah. If you've been accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and you've been baptized, you're welcome to partake of the body and the blood of the Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We thank you now, God, as we come this afternoon to be partakers of, of what you shared with us to do, O oh God. You said as often as we do this, to do this in remembrance of you, O oh God. And so today, God, at this first Sunday of the new year, the second day of this new year, we, we remember, O oh God, the sacrifice that you made for us over 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. We recall, God, and we remember how you hung, you bled, and you died. Hallelujah. For our sins and the sins of the world, they took you down off that off that cross, placed you in a borrowed tomb, and you rose again on the third day to give us the gospel. And we thank you, God. And so today we don't come lightly, O oh God. We don't come, O oh God, hallelujah, with pride or arrogance, Father. But today, Father, we come humbly unto you, Father, and we pray that you would accept, hallelujah, our humbleness as we partake of this the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then, God, as we move from this day, help us all of this, this day, all of this week, all of this month, oh God, help us to remember the sacrifice that you made for us. And we'll be ever careful to give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Why don't you open Hallelujah. Take out the bread and open up the cup. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Hallelujah, verse number 23, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it, said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Eat of the bread. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as all that ye drink it in remembrance of me. Take, drink. As ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do to the Lord's death until he come. Amen. 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 Don't forget, every day we're on the prayer line every morning at 6 a.m. Our theme for this month is New Beginning. Hallelujah. Our theme for the year is pressing the reset button. Hallelujah. We're pressing the reset button. We want God, hallelujah, to reset some things in our lives. Join us every morning at 6 a.m. Every morning at 6 a.m. We're on the Progressive Community Church prayer line. Information about the prayer line is on the back of the bulletin. And we invite and encourage you, hallelujah, to join us on the prayer line. Harmony Bridge has been uh, uh, suspended right now. We'll come back on the 12th, 12th of January with the bridge being restocked. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Don't forget to join us on Wednesday for an hour. Uh, our Bible study is one hour of power. It's the word on Wednesday. Join us this Wednesday at noon as we break open. Hallelujah. The word of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
All hearts and minds are one accord and understand. All of those who are watching, we say thank you for sharing with us in the virtual church. All of those who are visiting us and sharing with us today, we say thank you for worshiping with us in the visible church. Amen. Let's give them a hand, church. Amen. Thank you. You could have gone anywhere else to worship, but you came here to worship, and we don't take that lightly. And we say thank you for worshiping with us more today. Amen. Amen. Let the church, let the church be. Amen. Let the church say amen. God.